Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Yuri the Blender Magus, and, and today we're going to be modeling Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, now, uh, I've already modeled Sonic the Hedgehog, if any of you have been here since uh, the beginning of the channel. Uh, but that was back in 2.7, 2.6-ish. Uh, so that's a few years old now. And I wanted to make an update for all of the updated versions of Blender. So to my understanding, uh, you should be able to follow along in Blender 2.8 and 2.9. Just for full disclosure, I am still using the right click method. Uh, so if you're here um, wanting a beginner workflow on the left click method, I do apologize, but that is not something that I practice. However, you can find plenty of YouTube tutorials on using Blender with left click. It's not that different, uh, but I just, I prefer, I prefer right click. So with all that out the way, this is a beginner tutorial still. So I will be uh, going over uh, all the basics, things that you need to know. And uh, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so when you first open up Blender, you'll get a scene that looks like this. You usually have a cube in the center. To navigate in Blender, you hold the middle mouse button and you click and drag. You get to rotate. If you hold shift in the middle mouse button, you pan around the view. And if you scroll with the middle mouse button, you zoom in. You can also zoom in by holding control and holding the middle mouse button. If your computer doesn't have a number pad, what you can do is go to your preferences and go to input and click uh, emulate numpad. And basically what that'll do is that'll make your numbers on the top of your keyboard act like the number pad. So go to input. So if you do have a number pad, you don't have to worry about that. So on the number pad, you can hit five to switch between orthographic and uh, perspective mode. Ortho orthographic is flat, so there is no visual perspective. Uh, the object just gets bigger and smaller. Perspective, obviously there's real, real world perspective to the object. So that's hitting five on the number pad. You can hit one of the number pads to go on the front view, three on the number pad to go to the side view, and seven on the number pad to go to the top view. And you can hit control of those numbers to do the inverse. All right. So, yeah, so how you select <clears throat> is we're using right click. So right click to select. you move this 3D cursor down here by left clicking. To move your 3D cursor back to the center, you can hit Shift and S, and that'll bring up your cursor options. We're gonna move it back to the world origin. All right, so that's the basics of navigating in Blender. Uh, as we move along in the tutorial, uh, if you follow along, you should be able to make the character uh, along with me. So, now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you real quick uh, how to manipulate objects. So, G is for grab, and if you left click, the selection will stay permanent. If you hit G, uh, but then you right click, you'll stop whatever transformation you're doing. You can hit Control Z, obviously, to undo your action. You can hit R for rotation, and you can hit S to scale. Tab in, into edit mode, you have three different selection options. You can select vertices, and you see I'm moving these individual points. You can hold shift and right click to select multiple vertices. And you can change your selection method. So if you wanted to select an edge instead of using two vertices to select an edge you can hit two on your regular numbers up top 
and if you've emulated your number pad you might want to go up here uh, to this button here that has the edge marker so you click there you go or you, you know, hit G or R or S if you hit three or if you go to the face mode up here you can move faces in the same way so now that we understand that we're gonna hit tab to go back into object mode and we're going to hit X and delete all right so now we have a blank scene here what we want to do is we want to hit shift a or you can go to add mesh okay I want to hit shift a and I want to add uh, I want to add an image I want to add a reference image okay so go to wherever you have saved uh, your sonic reference image I usually just go to Google and I find you know some sort of sonic reference this is the one that I used in the last one and this is the one I'm gonna use in this one uh, so once you have this image downloaded I'm just gonna save it in my pictures I already have it saved once you have it saved go to wherever you have it I have it in my pictures it's better to click this button here so you can actually see what your images are and here you go click that now you have your reference image so what you want to do with this is you want to line it up in the 3d view uh, but before we do that we want to mess with this so go here to this tab down here on the side uh, I don't know if these are like the properties I forget the technical name for this section but this is the section that you go to manipulate uh, the object as far as the material uh, or um, the shading you know adding modifiers all that's over here so over here in the image tab we want to put this in the front as far as depth is concerned uh, we want to turn on opacity and turn it to 0.25 this makes it transparent next uh, we want to move this image in the 3d view so we hit G and X and we move it over and while you're moving if you get to a place where you know you want it to be more precise hold shift and your your movement will be more exact so we can zoom in here and we can get we can kinda get you know real pixel perfect with it if we wanted to So he should be sliced directly in half. All right. So there we go. Now, uh, what we can do here is move this image back and Shift D to duplicate the image. Bring it over. Rotate it on the X 90 degrees on the negative. Uh, so now we have the side view and we want the side view to line up with this blue line here so it's just about right and there we go so before we get started modeling Sonic I want to address a design flaw with the character um, I have watched some videos about uh, the animation in Sonic video games and someone pointed out that uh, in the cutscenes like the in-game cutscenes uh, not the pre-rendered ones the Sonic characters they tend to look uh, pretty they, they have a mascot issue they kind of look like they're people walking around with big headed costumes on uh, so I drew a reference design for myself uh, to see how I would like to address that problem uh, now I, I wanted to test and see how Sonic would look if his eyes were separated in 2D. Uh, in this situation, while the movie uh, was able to successfully make Sonic with his uh, eyes separated, I think I'm just going to stick with the reference image. And however, uh, the hand size and the shoe size is what I want to focus on, uh, and the uh, the width of his ligaments. Uh, I think that uh, shrinking them uh, would go towards uh, making him easier to animate 
Uh, I noticed when I was animating him uh, a few years ago when I first made this tutorial that his feet were so big that they <laughs> that they would run into each other. And I know that that's an issue that the animators themselves have had to figure out workarounds for. And I think that just shrinking, shrinking the size of his hands and feet would do that. Uh, and also, uh, you know, he has a bit of a more boxy shape. I think I'm going to go with this type of boxiness here. Um, so we're going to definitely modify the character as far as it looks uh, in relation to the background image we just imported, but that's fine because you can do whatever you want with your character <laughs> and you know you don't have to follow the background image. So I just wanted to bring this up uh, to uh, show you guys exactly what we'll be doing in this tutorial.